Hello everyone, Sundrak here. So this is the third part to the series. In this video, I'll be talking about all the new craftable weapons and who they are good on. Before we get started, just want to say a huge thank you to everyone who has been helping this channel with its growth. Now of course with that said, if you have not subscribed yet and you think I've earned your subscription, please consider subscribing. Thank you and let's get started. So I won't be mentioning the passive of these weapons, I'll just put them up on the screen. However, I will be mentioning the main stats, the secondary stats, and who these weapons are good at. So let's start with the single hand sword. The, of course the primary stats is always going to be attack, so I won't be mentioning that. The secondary stat is again attack percent, which makes this more of a DPS weapon. However, the passive kind of focuses on energy recharge, which I believe this set makes good for... This set is good for any character that needs a lot of energy recharge for their ultimate and has relatively fast elemental skill cooldowns. So a few characters to look in mind is Kia. Jin and Kamisato Ayaka. Now of course Kia I won't talk about too much, not everyone uses him, but energy recharge on Kia is always useful because his elemental burst is his main source of damage. Now let's move on to Jin. I know a lot of people might disagree for this choice, but again do remember that all of these 5 weapons are craftable so they are technically free to play as long as you have the correct billet type. So in the case of Jean, of course this is not the best weapon for her, also in the case of Kia and Ayaka. However, this is one possible possible weapon for Jean that can be used if you do not have any of the other more either gacha or other uh, options. If you do not have any other options, this is one of the weapons you can use. Now of course the third one to talk about is Kamisato Ayaka. For the main reason that um, Kamisato Ayaka needs 80 for her elemental burst and at the same time her elemental skill is somewhat slow with uh, around 10 seconds of cooldown. So with that I believe this set not this um this new weapon not only gives her enough attack to be able to do DPS from the secondary stat, it also allows her to recover a little bit more energy particles on top of say any other weapon. So in this case it helps her with her energy recharge problems because her alt is the main portion of her damage output. Next let's move on to the Poarm. For the poarm, the main stat is attack again. The secondary stat is elemental mastery. This is the first elemental mastery free to play poarm. The other option was dragon's bane, which is in the gacha. Now, unfortunately, for this set, it is mostly good on Shanling again, because she is the only poarm character that focuses heavily on elemental mastery at this moment. However, it is also rumored to be good on Toma. Of course, I won't be going over that since we don't even know Thomas' kit. However, the main thing for Shanling is this set focuses both on elemental mastery and energy recharge, both of which Shanling need, which is why this might be a better option than Dragon's Bane for Shanling when it comes to a half sub DPS, half support, or even a little bit pyro DPS Shanling build. The third one is the bow, the main stats is attack, the secondary stats is attack percent again, and for the passive, it is basically a better version of the previous prototype crescent, and most people call this uh, the mini ammo spell, which I believe makes sense in terms of um, passives. So this spell is of course good on Ganyu and Yoimiya. So in the case of Ganyu, Prototype Crescent of course is still usable. However, this is much more mobile slash um, like... This is more friendly for most characters, for most players because for this set, you do not have to always hit the weak spot for the passive to trigger. The passive is already there. And with Ganyu's case, a lot of the time you don't have to technically play your elemental burst when it is fully charged. So you are able to get some of the passives of double uh, the passive as well. In the case of Yoimiya, she pretty much don't want to use her burst until she is leaving the field because the burst buffs all other team members except her. So in her case, this set is pretty good because it buffs... It, she can pretty much take advantage of double the passive pretty much all the time as long as her energy is full. 
so this is pretty good on these two now of course if you're looking at this as a pure free to play option child can use this as well however in child case uh, he will be most likely having only one stack of the passive not both stacks because child does use his elemental burst quite a bit Next, let's move on to the Catalyst. For the Catalyst, the primary stats is Attack, the secondary stats is Energy Recharge. So for the primary stat, uh, for the Catalyst, it works best on two characters that probably most people doesn't use, Lisa and Sucrose. I know uh, probably someone, so probably some people use this cross, but not a lot of people use this Lisa. And personally, I believe this is the worst of the new five craftable weapons. So with that said, this is who they are good on. I won't go too much into that because the passive kind of pretty much explains itself. Finally, let's move on to the two-handed sword or claymore. The main stats is again attack, and the secondary stats is again energy recharge and for the passive it is the same passive as the pole arm which makes it very good on again someone who needs a lot of energy recharge for their elemental burst two people to look into is beto and sayu sayu needs elemental burst if you're looking for more of a healer build however if you do not put very heavy emphasis on healing you play sayu more as a dps then this won't be a pretty good option whereas for beto this set is pretty much perfect if you're playing beto as a single as the only Electro in your team, in which case you need both Energy Recharge and Extra Energy Particles, both of which this weapon provides. However, if you have official or any other Electro user on your team alongside Beto, she pretty much doesn't need to worry about Energy Recharge because, again, for Infacial's case, all this is pretty much a battery, and on top of that, the double Electro team res makes it Energy Recharge rather easy on Beto. So again, if you have at two or more electro characters on your team, then this is not a good weapon for Beto. However, otherwise, this is a good weapon. That is all the information I have for you today. If you like the content, please consider subscribing. Thank you and have a nice day.